welcome back to Sharon Cullen Art. My power has been out now for two days and we're looking at the middle of the night tonight for our power to come back on. Apparently we had that that tropical storm that hit down south at Cristobal or Cristobal or whatever came all the way up to Michigan and gave us horrible storms and knocked the power out in the entire thumb. This is what we call the thumb and that's where I live is right right here on the tip. Um, so anyway, we're without power and that's why my hair is like this. That and the fact that all the gray and, and the roots are showing. Um, but I have to wait till July 2nd to get my hair done. That's the first available appointment. Anyway, today's video is about watercolor. I've had so many messages. When are you gonna put the video out? When are you gonna put the video out? It was over an hour long. I tried it three times and it was just wrong. So today I have already done my swatches. You will see them in hyperlapse as I'm talking. But I wanted to go over a few things. First of all, there are certain paint palettes that I do not recommend. One of them is this Koi Sakura palette. It is not a good palette. It's got very chalky paint. It's a cute little palette. It comes with this little this little um, removable palette that you can put on the right or left side, whichever hand you use. And then it ha comes with a little water brush that has a little plug so that you can take it apart and still keep your water in it. And then it's got sponges for wiping your brush on. So it is cutesy, but it is not good paint. So don't waste your money on it like I did. It's really not worth the money. Then the next one that I do not recommend are these Prima Tech um, Tropicals, whatever they're called. Don't buy these. I only bought it for the palette, and then I never removed the paints from it. Um, they have a few paints in the middle that were Daniel Smith, but I swatched these as well. They're not good paints. Also, I'm going to tell you that the cute little pink and blue and green palettes, mint green palettes that you can get from Jane Davenport, they're the same paints as these. Same exact paints. Don't waste your money on them unless you just want to spend a ton of money for the little palette and then you want to take the paints out and buy more paint to put in. These are not good paints and I'll show you that in a minute. Then um, there is a good student palette. If you're looking for good student paint, Van Gogh makes a good student paint. They've got very nice transparent colors as you can see by my swatch here. And the paints are very nice. They're half pans and it comes with your little mixing tray and you get a little brush with it. So Van Gogh is a good student quality paint to get. I would stay away from Katman watercolors. Some people like them and I was going to recommend them and then I did the swatch test and I thought, holy cow, these paints are not good. They're just not good and it surprises me. Some of them are pretty good, but then the, there's others that are really, really not pigmented. And some professional artists swear by these Katman colors. They're inexpensive Winsor & Newton colors, but these are the student level. Then you get into artist level colors, and I have this cutesy little palette that cost me a fortune. It was like $85 US to get it. In the UK, you can get them very cheap, and I think the prices come down over the years, but I got it when they first came out. These are the professional colors. Comes with a brush, a little water thing that holds not even one swallow of water. Comes with a little sponge, and then you've got your mixing areas. So it's cute, but I will show you. I don't care for the Winsor & Newton professional colors either. Then we have St. Petersburg White Knights. I like these. I have heard some flack from people on these, and people get very passionate about their watercolors. So I'm just going to tell you right now, these are my personal opinions. Get whatever the heck you want. Or if you watch somebody else who uses something and swears by it, and she likes this or he likes that or whatever, good for you. Don't Please don't bitch me out in the comments. Please don't bitch me out in the comments. These are just opinions, and I'm going to show you the swatches so that you can compare. White Knights are very pigmented. Yes, some of them are semi-transparent because they use cadmium colors. This cadmium yellow is going to be semi-transparent. 
Their earth tones will be semi-transparent, just as most paints are. Their cadmium, cadmium red light is semi-transparent. There are no cadmiums that are not. But that being said, they use cadmium. So if you want to stay away from cancer-causing agents, then you'll want to stay away from these paints because they do have a few that contain cadmium. Another student brand that I would suggest you stay away from is Sennelier. This palette is kind of nice. It's got a rubbery handle on the back, which is really nice for hanging on to because you can do whatever you want and it's not going to fall. It has a hinged thing on it. Um, Lindsay Wirick from the Frugal Crafter did buy these, and she said they that she felt they were as good as the... Um, Sorry, I thought my dog was at the door. That they were as good as the artist quality. If these are as good as the artist quality, then I recommend you don't buy either <laughs> because I'm not thrilled with these colors. Some of them are not very pigmented at all. I think the ultramarine blue was one that was really not pigmented. The palette is nice and big. It's very nice. It comes with 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 24 colors. So, um, yeah, take it or leave it, but I don't like it. Then we get into professional colors. Shinhan PWC Professional Watercolor Series has awesome, awesome paints. They are very high quality, very light fast. They're great paints. So I do recommend those. Shinhan PWC. Um, there's Mission Gold watercolors. I don't know about the light fastness on some of them. I do know that their Opera Pink, the fluorescent pink one, you never want to buy this color because it is fugitive. And it will it will um, just fade away to nothingness. But their paints are very vibrant and pretty. And they use honey in their binder. So they're very sticky and they stay sticky in the palette. Shiny like they never dry. So that's Mission Gold. Then one that I will recommend for you that I think is great for people starting out, even if you're not starting out, these are Da Vinci watercolors. They are professional watercolors. They're artist quality. And if you go to DaVinci.com, you can look at all of their palettes. These palettes, this one is like $56, full pans, larger than a regular pan, more like the um, white knight size. They, this one has 12 colors, great, terrific colors, and they, the palette, I believe, retails for like $56, and it comes in this nice metal um, palette with the ring on the back. I do recommend this, and then there are other artists who put together their favorite colors in a palette. Theirs go for a little bit more. Some of them have so many half pans and then some full pans. Some are all half pans, some are all full pans. Just go to the website at Da Vinci and you can see all of them. But these are great paints. Sorry I'm rushing through this because there's so much to cover. Um, then we have Schmincke. Schmincke are very expensive in the US because they're imported from Europe, as all of them uh, from Europe are. They have uh, different palettes. This palette of 12 colors, I think, cost me like $80 or something like that. I ended up with two of them because one of them got lost in the mail, and I ended up with another, and they said, oh, you could go ahead and throw the other one away or whatever you want to do with it. I thought, are you kidding me? But, um, yeah, their paints are good. I just don't care for them. It's just a personal preference, you know. Um, then I have core colors. I just put them in here. Their colors are also very nice. I added some Daniel Smiths in with them, but um, the core colors are very nice, and I will show you those swatches as well. So core is made by um, Golden, which is a U.S. company, I believe. I believe it is. Anyway, that's those are those palettes. Now, one of the palettes I wanted to show you that I really, really like are two palettes, actually. I like these little aluminum palettes that you can buy on Amazon. Just do a search on Amazon for aluminum palettes and you will see. I can't show you anything today because my power's out, so I have no inter my internet is down too, even though we have a generator going. I can't even get internet because that's down as well. So anyway, this is one of my favorite palettes. All my paints are falling out of it right now. This one I use for um, traveling a lot. And this one holds, I believe, 18 colors. They're really nice palettes, and they won't rust because they're aluminum. 
this one, the portable painter. Uh, I got this free from the inventor when he was doing his Kickstarter program, I think on Indiegogo. And this portable painter comes apart like this. You can pull this apart and slide the cups on either side of this, just like that. And then you can fill them with water and they become water cups. But that's not all. Well, then you open it up like this and you have room for 12 half pans inside. Um, I had to, I, these came with half pans and I had to sticky them down because they were wiggling and popping out every time I used my paint. I put Daniel Smith paints in it, of course, because you guys all know that I love Daniel Smith. But the water cups are very nice to have. This can sit on a table or if you're out plein air painting, you can just put it on your leg and it will sit right on your leg as well. Uh, you just set it on your thigh and I'll show you here. You can set it on your thigh just like this, and it works really well. So it's a nice little palette. Those are the palettes that I wanted to show you. Um, the only reason I don't really use this palette much is because I don't care for half pans. I feel like half pans ruin brushes too easily because you end up jabbing the edge of the brush into the side of the pan regardless of size. So there are other paints I haven't shown you, like Fine Tech paints, those sparkly ones. Those are nice paints too. Then you all have seen my everyday go-to palette, which is mostly Daniel Smith paints, but I do have a few other paints in here by Shinhan PWC and Rembrandt. And I believe that just about covers it. And at this point, I only have two spaces left I think and then they're full so this palette filled up pretty f fast I can use these little areas too that are actually mixing areas but I would use them to put paint in um, so it's almost full already <laughs> but I have plenty of colors I really don't need any more paint okay I do want to talk to you really quickly about light fastness I did mention on the mission golds that I didn't know the light fastness. I do have it all written down and they're all pretty good. They're all pretty well light fast except for the couple that are fugitive like that opera pink that I showed you. But um, the one thing I wanted to explain to you and I've explained it in other videos and I had somebody tell me that I needed to explain the difference and I didn't understand the difference in light fastness. Uh, from European to American colors. Obviously, the person must have fast-forwarded through my video and skipped that whole portion, but I told her to go back and watch it. What I'm going to tell you is something you've probably heard before from me if you've been watching me for a while. Anybody who uses ASTM standards, which is the American Standard for Testing Materials, they always carry their light fastness as one being excellent, for being fugitive or fading. Uh, so one and two, one is excellent, two is good, three is fair, and, and four would be poor or fugitive. Uh, or maybe there's five, four is p poor and then five is fugitive. But anyway, you wanna stay away from four and five and don't go any lower than a three. But uh, you, most paints you'll get would be one and two. So anybody who uses ASTM standards for their light fastness quality will be using one as excellent, four as fugitive. So European standards are different. Some Asian standards go by the European way of doing things where four is excellent and one is poor or fugitive. So you have to know where your paints come from. And you can look right on your box and see, it'll say somewhere, well, this is all in Russian, that's not gonna help me because it came from Russia. Um, it'll say somewhere that they use what standards they use. So let me just find this one here. This is the Shinhan PWC Extra Fine Artist Watercolors. This one says that the cobalt blue is a number three. It does not say that they use ASTM standards. So three would be good instead of poor, okay, or fair. Now let me grab the yellow and see what the yellow says. 
Yellow Light Fastness is two on their Permanent Yellow, three on their Viridian, um, two on their Permanent Violet, Burnt Sienna is three, Permanent Red is three. So they're going by more Asian or European standards with these. And you've just got to be careful with that. Anything that is ASTM, one would be excellent, four would be poor. European, Asian uh, companies who are not using ASTM standards are four being excellent and one being poor. So try not to let that confuse you when you're looking at their light fast qualities. And if you're going to buy paint, buy paint that has good light fastness, unless you really don't care if your paints fade and they change color over time. If you want them to stay the way they looked when you painted them, then you want to buy good quality paint that has number one and two light fast quality. Okay? Some European companies are now changing over to ASTM standards. I can't tell you off the top of my head who that is, but I ran into it recently and I was shocked. Got some recent paint that I bought and it said, oh no, 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 no. I think it was my Karen Dash pencils that I had, I had talked about in my unboxing video and they used ASTM standards, I believe might have been them. Maybe it was Faber-Castell. I forget. But anyway, let's move on. I've told you what to look for. Just watch that. Now here I'm going ahead and just putting down all of these different paints. I'm not going to use every color from every set. I'm just trying to keep warm and cool reds, warm and cool yellows, greens, blues, and earth tones on each set. But I am going through. These first two were student. This one is St. Petersburg White Knights. And uh, I'm going to be flipping back and forth between student and pro. I'm just grabbing palettes here. But the one thing you'll notice after they're dry, and I will show you that, is how chalky some of the student paints can get and how watered down they look. Some of the paints I had to go back like on the Cotman and keep rubbing and going into it. But now like these Schmincke paints, I'm barely touching them and they go right on. Same with these core paints, except I put them in the wrong spot. I'm sorry I'm off frame for part of it, but you'll be seeing it all. See, I'm just barely touching these. Now the Sennelier, I had to keep rubbing on them in the palette. It's hard to see at 16 times the speed. The Mission Golds, they, they go on so well because they have that honey binder. Honey binder um, makes it easy to reconstitute paint. Now these, they go on very pigmented, but they're very chalky-like, and I did have to rub a lot on some of them. Now with the Daniel Smith, I'm going a lot slower because I have to keep searching for my colors in my palette, and that's what's taking a long time. But they go on very pigmented as well. Once they're all dry here, I'm going to go ahead and show you all of these paints so that we can compare them together. And the PWCs, I just don't have that many of. And these are our Renaissance watercolors made in Poland. We now have a distributor here in Maine, and you can get them on Etsy or Amazon. Okay, another day's passed, and we have power again, so we have water again, and I was able to shower and wash my hair and everything. It's a great day to be alive. Anyhow, um, I wanted to also add to the list this palette of colors I have. These are called Renaissance watercolors. I received some of these, um, and I purchased some of these from the woman on Etsy who, I forget her name, I'm sorry you guys, I feel really bad that I, I don't have her name here, but she is a new distributor for these watercolors in the U.S. Because there was, because there was no distributor. She went on a trip and went over to Poland where these are from and she actually spoke to them there and said she would like to be a distributor for them in the U.S. if they were willing to do that. And they said, yes, it's great. So she became a distributor and she sells these paints on Etsy. So now we can get them through the U.S. and the cost isn't as bad as if it would be coming from Poland 
um, she was, while she was there, she was checking out local watercolors and she really loved these. They are beautifully transparent colors. Uh, they are highly pigmented and they're, they're professional watercolors. They're at a professional watercolor price, but they're not over the top expensive, uh, like a lot of imported European colors are because she is the middleman and she is selling them from Maine, I believe, is where she is at. So you can get them here in the U.S. and in Canada now. So I added those to my video there. And now I, what I'd like to do is go over all of these and show them to you with an actual light on so that you can see them. <laughs> now, I have cut up some of these student watercolors so that I could get them back together with each other and I could do some comparisons for you between the different sets and show you exactly what you would be getting into with each set. So I want to start with the student watercolors and these two are students. Those are pros, pros. I think all of these are pros, yes. So I'm going to move these over here and show you these student watercolors first. The student watercolors that I showed you were Sennelier, um, Winsor & Newton Cotman, Primatech, Van Gogh Royal Talons, which is a high-end student watercolor. Actually, they are not student watercolors, but they are not professional. They are an in-between stage of watercolor. I don't know how else to say that, but they if you look online, it will not tell it will tell you that these are not considered student watercolors. They are artist quality watercolors, but they're not their highest end watercolor. Uh, and then I have the Sakura set. So the first thing I wanted to show you was with the Sakura set and the Primatex sets, how chalky they begin to look. When you, when you look at them. And they are not always as highly pigmented. Now, Primatex and Sakuras do have a lot of pigment, but they're also mostly semi-transparent. They have a high-end binder in them. So what you're paying for basically is a lot of binder when you buy student watercolors. If you're a crafter or a beginner and you're not sure you're going to like it, you could go ahead and buy beginner watercolors. I don't always recommend that because buying beginner watercolors, you're not gonna get the same effect as a pro and when you do tutorials, you might find yourself getting frustrated because your watercolors aren't doing what they should be doing and that's because you're using a student brand. Now here are the Cotman watercolors. Look how pale they are in comparison to the others, to the Sakura Koi and the Primatech. They are very pale in comparison. I don't know if this is picking up here, but let me back out a little bit again so that you can see them. And you'll see that their ultramarine blue does not show up very well. Their yellows are strong. Most yellows are. Their um, earth tones are not very strong either. And these reds are not very strong. If you see in comparison to others, they're just, they're just not there. And that's the Winsor Newton Cotman that people rave about. So I, I wanted you to see that. I was even going to recommend it as a student watercolor. Um, but when they're, when you could get Van Gogh at a student price in comparison to Cotman, I would go with Van Gogh. Look at the difference in these colors. Look at the vibrancy of these colors. They're still transparent. Um, of course, lemon yellow is usually semi-transparent, so you're going to see that, or if you're using cadmium colors. But look at the difference in, for instance, the ultramarine blue here. You've got a huge difference in color. Same with the sap green, the vibrancy of the sap green. This orange, reds, they're all much brighter in the Van Gogh Royal Talons series. But like I said, these are not considered student watercolors. They are a step above, and they are at a student level price. Now, I want to show you the professional, Winsor Newton professional watercolors, 
in comparison to the cotton. This is the Winsor & Newton Professional colors. They are not a whole heck of a lot brighter than your uh, Cotman colors, which is why people who say, oh, the Cotman colors are just fine. They're just as good as the Pro. Yeah, they may be, but their, their ultramarine blue is definitely stronger in the Pro series than in the um, student level Cotman colors. And the sap is is stronger. Their lemon yellow is actually weaker. And maybe it's a different a different lemon yellow, I'm not sure. And the reds are a bit stronger. So if you're gonna go with Windsor Newton, I would say get a small set of the pros. But I don't they're harder to reconstitute. I had to scrub on them in order to get them to to uh come off on on the paper. So the other the other ones, there was no effort at all. I just dipped my brush in after I sprayed them, and I sprayed them and used them right away. I did not let any sets sit longer than the other. They sat dry until I was ready. I sprayed them down with my spray bottle and immediately started putting the color on. So there was no difference from any set. Now, when you look at other sets like the Renaissance, these are beautifully strong colors. We're getting into now the Pro series. Let me just cut these off because, oh no, these are all Pros. Okay, we've got the St. Petersburg White Knights, which some will say are student level. They're not student level. They are actually a professional level watercolor made out of Russia, I believe. And a lot of Russian artists use them. If you ever look at Russian artists' work, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. But um, you'll see that these are very vibrant colors. This is the St. Petersburg. Here's your Da Vinci set. The Da Vinci set, oh, and now that I have internet, let me show you their web page. i got to turn my light off here so you can see. And I apologize for the wiggling. When I reset my camera, it bounces a little bit. But, and let me turn the light on this up. I had it down when I didn't have power so I wouldn't run out while I was reading a book. Okay, here's their watercolor sets. The one that I was telling you about was their 12 color basic set. Here it is, right here. 12 hand-filled full-size pans in a durable travel pin for pan tin, I'm sorry, for $56. That is a really good price. And all you need is 12. I mean, you don't even need 12 colors, but 12 colors will get you a long way, and you'll be able to do a lot of mixing with these. If you're familiar with Scratch Made over on Instagram, she has her own blog, too. She has an 18... Um, color set with six full pans and 12 half pans. That's $134. Her 12, that's strange because this one, 18 hand-filled pans, six full size and 12 half size are $79. So I'm not sure what the difference is here. A color card, that's it? I would go with this one. Um, then she also has a refill set with one and a half full size pans, three half size pans, uh, $115. But then here's one for six is watercolor flower palette for $39. There's one up here, um, wildlife palette, 12 half pans for 49. Uh, six filled, full filled pans with your warm and cool primaries are 39. So they are very good watercolors. And I think I got mine over on Amazon, but you can buy them right here. The prices are the same. And this is the one that I got for $56. Beautiful watercolor set. Uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time on that, though. So let me turn this back on. And we're going to go ahead and look at the rest of these professional colors. Out of the professional colors, uh, Mission Gold. Mission Gold is very, very vibrant, but I'll tell you, they don't have basic color names. They do on some of their paints, but there's no burnt sienna. So I took these, yeah, let me get you back out a little bit. I took these two colors and put them both down. This is more like a quinacridone sienna color, I would say. And this is 
different. I don't know what I would call that, but I put them both down. There was no um, burnt sienna. There's no phthalo blue. They have a peacock blue that I put down, which is still different than a phthalo blue that you'll see in other colors, palettes. But if you're going to go for a pro palette, I would recommend you go with Renaissance, Shinhan, PWC. You've got to make sure you get PWC, which stands for professional watercolors. You want their extra fine watercolors. Those come in tubes. If you don't want to deal with tubes and you just want to have pre-filled pans, the then... Ah. Starts in 10 minutes. Sorry about that. Alexa's talking to me. Um, but then the Da Vinci set is very, very pigmented and inexpensive. Windsor Newton professional colors are going to be more expensive in the U.S. Their Cotman colors are the ones that you will see mostly in re in sets. Oops, I got a phone call now. Okay, sorry for the disturbance here. So, what was I saying? Um, when anything that is imported is going to be a little more expensive. But in showing you this, as a student or a beginner, you may think, oh, well, these are not that bad. These, they all look the same to me, but to the naked eye, maybe for a beginner, they would look all the same. But when you look at things like putting this one next to your pros, this is the Windsor Newton Cotman. The Primatex are bright, but they're all semi-transparent. They have a ton of binder. And when you dip your brush in, it uses a ton out of the pan. So you're going to run out of paint very quickly on those. The Sennelier Student, I did not like those either. I felt that they were very um, pale in comparison to other brands. I mean, you look at the sap in comparison to um, some of the professional brands. Now, of course, you guys know I like Daniel Smith. Daniel Smith holds up very well. There are other prof professional brands that I don't have, and there's no reason that I don't have them. It's just that I'm very comfortable with Daniel Smith. That's what I have learned and practiced on over the years. So all of my other pro sets kind of take a back seat unless I'm using them for uh, plein air painting or urban sketching and that sort of thing in a sketchbook. But if I'm doing a professional painting, I always go with my Daniel Smith paints because I'm comfortable with them. I know how they handle, how they spread on the paper because every brand is going to work differently. You might have a red that you put down on paper and you do a wet into wet technique and it just spreads out all over. And then you go to a different brand and you put your red down on paper and it just sits still and you think, well, that's weird. It's just a different brand, different, may possibly a different binder, different, maybe a different pigment, and that affects everything. So finding something you like can be a challenge, but as a beginner, Starting out, I say, I always say, get the most professional paint that you can afford. And you don't need a set of 24 colors to start. Maybe get six or 12, and that's all you need. Six colors, a warm and cool of each color, will get you exactly what you need to mix all the colors in the rainbow, pretty much. Um, and what I mean by warm and cool is like when you look at this this yellow, it's that's a warm yellow, this is a cool yellow, a warm blue versus a cool blue, a warm red versus a cool red. Uh, that's all you need. And maybe a burnt sienna to throw in there, and you'll be fine. But you could even make up your own burnt sienna. It's not going to be burnt sienna, but you can come close to that color by mixing. And with you don't need a Payne's Gray. You just mix your ultramarine blue with your... Um, burnt sienna and you have Payne's gray or burnt umber. That's another one. Either one will give you a Payne's gray. So getting one earth tone or two earth tones like a um, yellow ochre and a burnt sienna are good as well. But stay away from these student level paints if you can. And if you can't um, and you want to go somewhere in between, I recommend Van Gogh. And from the professional series, I recommend Da Vinci. Where are they? Da Vinci, where'd you go? That student. Well, I don't know where. Oh, here, Daniel Smith, Renaissance, Windsor Newton Pro, Da Vinci. There's Da Vinci. One of these two sets 
are very good too. And I like the Van Gogh. I think they look very good. Um, their lemon yellow is semi-transparent. The others are pretty much transparent. Earth tones are always going to be more semi-transparent, like I said. And the Da Vinci ones are a step higher than your Van Gogh even. So there you have it. I hope this helped you with, when it comes to watercolor. I tried to keep it as short as I could. I redid this video four times. The first three times it came out over an hour long. So I was able to get this down to about a half hour. I don't know where I'm at now, um, but I'm probably a little over a half hour. If you have questions regarding watercolor, leave your comments below uh, and I will try to answer all your questions or I'll do a follow-up video for you on, on those. But uh, anyway, uh, also I will be doing my studio tour Here's a robin at my door. <laughs> I will be doing my studio tour uh, very soon. My vanity did come in. My storm doors did come in. So now they just have to bring my vanity in, hook it up. And that's probably going to be a couple more weeks because we're doing doors on our house and on, on my um, studio here. Uh, my storm doors anyway because it is a mosquito infested habitat back here right now and uh, I can't keep my doors open <laughs> but uh, anyway that's it so leave your questions comments down below don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I will talk to you all soon remember be courageous paint with wild abandon but most of all be kind to each other take care God bless